Hey everybody, welcome to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are continuing with our My Five series when we bring in photographers and photo professionals to talk about five images that have some importance, some meaning to them. And today we have Lisa Kessler. Uh, Lisa is a, I'm going to call you a documentary photographer or a journalist, but um, I don't know if that's accurate. But Lisa, thank you so much for coming back here on the Crit House and talking to us. Oh, you're very welcome, Jeff. Thank you for inviting me and for this uh, opportunity, really, to dig into some photographs and take the challenge of trying to figure out <laughs> five. <laughs> I know five is hard. It's hard to decide on. Well, I, I greatly appreciate you joining. So, so I called you a documentarian and journalist. Is that is that an accurate way of describing you? How do you talk about yourself as a photographer when you when you do? You know, I, I I just generally talk about, I just call myself a photographer, but I do think I specialize in documentary work. I do a lot of different kinds of work, but I, yeah, documentary is fine. I mean, the broader the description, the better, I always think. Oh, I should say, you you have a class that's coming up um, that you are teaching, a workshop at the Griffin Center, uh, or the Griffin Museum of Photography, that is yep. on telling stories? Documentary storytelling. It's really about how, um, you know, to help people who are already, you know, interested in photography, but looking to make more for themselves to go beyond single images, which of course is the irony of what mm -hmm. we're talking about today, <laughs> um, and figure out how to imbue their work with more of their own subjectivity, their own perspective. So we'll go through a series of exercises or assignments, really, that maybe challenge the way people think. And it it's a class that's good for people who are already working on a longer form project or people who are just, you know, like the idea of it and don't know how to start. Now, I know you had a, a, a challenge coming down to five images. So Tell us about how you came down to these five images and like the process you went through and make and deciding what those five images would be. Well, you know, my first reaction was that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm interested in single images <laughs> per se, um, but also that the images for me are never separate from the makers, hmm. you know, from the photographers. So really for me, it's about, okay, choosing five photographers I want to talk about um who do longer form work who do you know work in bodies of work well let's let's take a look and I, and I will say that um it's it does seem like most of the people that we've been talking to they start out with the photographer and choose an image from that photographer to represent that person's work so here's Lisa Kessler's five Graciela Iturbide Oh, you, pr you pronounced that much better than I would have. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, I, I lived in Mexico for three years in the late 80s. And this image for me, I just have always loved this image because it captures a whole sensory experience. You know, something that happens to a lot of people, especially <clears throat> photographers when we're out there in the world, we experienced something like just simply, um, I remember one day walking down the bike path in Somerville and there was this incredible burst of birds coming out of the shrubs. And of course, as a photographer, my first thought is, oh, get a picture. Yeah. But, you know, at the time I sent my phone, so I just snapped a picture, but the picture doesn't say anything. It doesn't, the picture doesn't, it documents that moment, but it doesn't convey the feeling that you have being in a space and hearing the sound and seeing the movement and, um, you know, the smell, it's just everything, the 360 degree experience of looking and kind of being alive. And for, so for me, this photograph has always conveyed that feeling of the whole three-dimensional space, a totally immersive photograph that takes you not just to a place, but to a place where the people and the other living things are completely intertwined. This one I can pro uh, pronounce Robert Frank. <laughs> yeah, this has always been, um, 
one of my favorite Robert Frank images. It's, you know, you find it, uh, it's not in the Americans because it's, um, it's taken in London. Mm -hmm. You know, it has all of the structural elements of the composition of the diagonal lines moving back in the frame, you know, from all sides, from the ground, from the wall on the left, from the, the hearse on the right and the building on the right, all taking us back. But then it does this wonderful thing of just having the hearse, having this vehicle, only like only showing the back of the vehicle and having the gate, the back door open as if something has just come out or just going in. And then of course, you know, for me, the feeling was always like something's just popped out of there and you see this little child running down the road. So that connection, between the foreground and the background, which may have been completely um, arbitrary, but because he framed the photograph like this, he's he's tricked us or or documented for us a relationship between the child on the left and the vehicle on the right, and everything that you know the a vehicle like that implies, you know, death and uh, moving on to other levels. And then of course the, um, the fogginess of the day and, you know, even the little figure you that you see through the window there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your third image. Now this is a found image. Often my thinking is influenced by, um, you know, seeing photographs at galleries and museums. And last week I was up at the Peabody Essex Museum and one of the photographs that I saw in that show was by the photographer Zun Li, I, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. So when I went to his uh, website to learn more about that artist, I came across this body of work that he uh, had collected of found photographs, found Polaroids, which, you know, bought in yard sales, eBay, whatever, and they're unknown people. And he has a beautiful display of them. And I just love them because it's just like all these, it's just like there's so many levels to it for me. They're just, you know, found, somebody discarded these. These pictures were important to someone. They're beautiful in their simplicity. They remind us that what really matters in photography is, is who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a trained photographer or a well-known photographer to create really important work. And I, I wanted to pick one. There were several on his site that have the notes written down below. Most of these are probably from the 80s. But um, I had to choose this one because of the pink car. But um, <laughs> I, just, I just think it's important to remember, like, get off our high horses. If you look through this collection on his website of these Polaroids, this could be up in a museum. This could be, it's, it's so informative of just how people live and how beautiful their lives are and their feelings for one another. From the great Susan Masalis. Yeah. <laughs> Susan has always been ahead of her time in my way of thinking. She's always been one of the most uh, rigorous photographers who, um, has always been so thoughtful about not just making a picture for the picture's sake, but in engaging with the subject. Oh, I was just gonna say, so just as a, as a point of explanation for this, that's her image on the billboard. Yes. The person so, is looking at her image yes. from, the, from the street. And then the, she's taken that yes. image of her image on the billboard. Yes, so, um, you know, what she's done, she was a very important photographer in the late 70s, working in Central America, specifically in uh, Nicaragua and El Salvador. And so this is from 1978, 79. This is one of her photographs up there on the billboard mm -hmm. from her book, Nicaragua. And 25 years later, you know, in 2004, she collaborated with a university there and went back to Nicaragua. 
she went down there with 19 billboards and reinstalled them in the places where they were taken 25 years earlier. Wow. As, and the project is called, I think it's called reframing history. Installing them in the same place is a way of like being in the present, but looking at the past and trying to think about it. And she's doing it not for us so much, which I think a lot of the original work was for us as Americans to understand our involvement and our government's involvement in the wars in Central America. But here she is trying to create a site of um, historical remembrance. You know, how do we do that with the past? How do we not forget the past, but make it relevant without, you know, just bringing it there? It's just so amazing. So you've gone a different direction with your fifth image. You know, yes. The rest of them were, were documentary, and then this one is not explicitly documentary or journalistic. But it is. Okay, tell us about that. But it is in a way. Well, first I'll say that this is an image uh, or a triptych I was exposed to, I first saw at the Museum of Fine Arts here in Boston at the um, Ansel Adams exhibit, where there it was a reflection on how to look at and think about uh, the work of Ansel Adams. So this is uh, Megan Riepen Riepenhoff, is a photographer out west who makes these unique cyanotypes, meaning that she's coating paper uh, with a light sensitive uh, substance and then placing that paper into the elements. And in this body of work, she's placing it at the edge of the ocean. And she's allowing the water, the waves, the repetition mm. of the waves to make marks on the paper. She's not standing there and looking at it at the ocean as an outsider, because mm -hmm. we are outside of, we think of ourselves as separate from the ocean. She's making an image that is from the ocean and she's not controlling it. She's letting it make its own image. She's saying something, she's trying to bring us into into a communication with aspects of our contemporary world, which is the environment, which she doesn't refer to as the environment, she refers to as our environment, my environment. And I think that that kind of thinking is very much um, tied to the last two pictures, both to Susan Mycellus' sense of this is us, this is our world, even if you don't know about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's ours, it's not um, something external to us, something that we're not responsible for. And also to the vernacular image, the found Polaroid, <clears throat> and the idea that what's right in front of us is what's most valuable and most beautiful. and the subject itself can be the most important um, documenter of their own life and their own experience. And in this case, the artist is giving the natural elements, that autonomy, that uh, authorship. Th thank you for showing all of your images, Lisa Kessler. It's been a, a pleasure to talk to you on our My Five series. And I want to say, if, uh, if you folks out there wish to uh, participate on the Crit House, um, go to Instagram or wherever you show your images and show your five images and uh, use the hashtag my five. And if you want to tag us at the Crit House, we will potentially have you on the program and to show your images as well. Lisa Kessler, thank you so much for participating and thank you all for watching the Crit House. Thanks.